Hello, welcome to my channel, Tall Talks from a Short Lady. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to write a resume. This is a very exhaustive topic, so I am forced to divide it into two parts. Part one, I'll be talking about the core or essential components that must feature in a resume. And in part two, I'll be talking about additional components which can be added to the resume. Please look at part two in conjunction with part one for complete information on this topic. Now, the first thing that you would like to put in your resume would be the contact information. And this is a must for any resume. If you're going for a ready template, it will be taken care of you. Uh, the name has to be right at the top in big bold font. In fact, you are the reason why there is a resume. So you are the point of focus. So make sure it is visible, your name. Also put your first name first and then your surname. Next, you must put your physical address. Now, this is not mandatory because in today's time, uh, no information from the company will be sent to you by post. Mostly, whatever transaction will happen will be electronically. So even if you skip on this part, it's perfectly okay. You must be putting your telephone number, which is registered, but at times even our telephone numbers are subject to change. Hence, we must put the email address. This is the fail safe. And also at times the email addresses that we have created were done when we were children. So do not use email addresses, which sound a little frivolous. Make a fresh one only for professional use uh, from which you will be applying for jobs and receiving communication. From. So this will serve you well. Next is you must create a LinkedIn profile because it is the only platform which is for a professional interaction. And make sure that the link that you put in your resume is a clickable hyperlink so that the interview panel, if they are interested in looking at your LinkedIn profile, they can directly go there from the hyperlink. Next is you must put an objective. This is something that you need to customize every time that you apply to a new company. Now, many people will say that an objective is a waste of space, but I would like to tell you why an objective is important for an entry level job. Please do not write vague statements like to get a suitable job in a high growth sector. Uh, you might be applying to a high growth sector, but maybe the job opening they have for you uh, might not be exactly what you're looking for. So please mention very specifically what you are planning for in the company. So mention words like you're applying for a full time, an entry level or an internship because uh, most companies do not have a physical person running through your resume. All the resume that are posted to a company, say for example, forwarded through Nokri.com, is run through a software. Now the software is programmed to pick up keywords. And if these keywords are missing in your resume, mostly the resume is kept in a different stack and kept to one side. The next thing you must include in your objective would be positions like a developer, a senior consultant, or a business analyst, so that they know exactly what job profile you have applied for and they channel your resume into the right stack. Briefly mention why you're interested in this particular position. Also mention how you will contribute to the organization. You're all looking to benefit from the job, but even the company is there to do business, so they are interested in knowing how you can help the company grow. Finish off the entire objective in one single sentence. Now, it is a tough job to compose all of these things and fit into one sentence, but I have an example for you here. Looking for a challenging, entry level job so please note the highlight of the entry level job as a developer you are telling exactly what position you're looking for within a healthy competitive environment where there is ample opportunity to learn and hone my technical skills you're talking about what you are looking for in the company 
and put them to use for the growth of the organization. You're also telling them how you will help the company. Please note that the entire objective is written in one sentence. Also, there's a marked difference between career profile, career summary, because an objective is used only for entry level jobs. If you have been working for the last six, seven years, then your objective will get changed to the word summary, profile or a career profile. Moving on to the third thing that should come in your resume is your academics, education, qualification. Now I've used a slash to indicate that you can use any of these words, whichever sounds good to your ears. Since you are a fresher and you do not have any work experience, this is what should come right in the beginning of your resume. And please follow the reverse order, which means you must talk about the latest degree you've earned first. Also, skip lower qualifications like secondary school certification, which talks about your 10 standard marks. Because if you're doing your graduation, it automatically means that you have cleared your 10th standard, you've cleared your 12th standard, and hence you got an admission in a graduate degree. So do not waste a lot of space in your resume by trying to put in your 10th and 12th standard marks. Next is when you're writing about your qualification, first you include the name of the degree, the institution which has awarded you the degree, the board or the university to which the institution is affiliated to, and the year in which you were awarded the degree. Don't use acronyms like HSC, write it in full, because in India, people might be aware of the term HSC, but if you are applying abroad for any job, they might not be aware of this acronym. Next is, you need to understand the difference between the degree and the board, which is giving you the degree. I see a lot of times my students are confused within the two. So instead of calling it the secondary school certification, they call it 10 standard. Now 10 standard is not a certification. So here is an example. Higher secondary certification, which is known as HSC, is the degree. But the board may be Maharashtra board, which is awarding you. It can come from Indian secondary certification, which is IC headquarters in Delhi, or it can be given to you by the Central Board of Secondary Education, CBSC, again, which is in Delhi. Here is an example for you. I have taken the first degree that you are earning, maybe your Bachelor of Engineering. Please note that for private colleges, mostly it's termed as Bachelor of Engineering. But if you're coming from IIT, it is known as a Bachelor of Technology. Then in brackets, you can write the branch that you're from. Then you mention the year in which you took admission and the year in which you will be getting the degree. Our next is you talk about the institution or the college where you're studying and the fact that this college is affiliated to the University of Mumbai. You will also notice that I have written the word India because it is possible that you're getting your bachelor degree from India, but your master's degree somewhere from US. So it's a good idea to mention the country because not all the time the university is named after the city. Here is another example. In case you are interested in talking about your 12 standard certification, this is how you go ahead and do it. Though if you are looking to put in more information on your resume, my advice is to skip it altogether. Moving to the next one, which is your work experience. Now for you, right now you do not have any work experience, but it is a good idea for you to know how to, in fact, document your work experience. Maybe after a year's time, you will be applying for another company. In that case, you will need to put in the work experience. So first, you mention the job title, or the position or the designation that you hold in the company, write the name of the company or the organization and the year or the months from which to which you have worked. Next is highlight your job responsibilities in one or two bullet points. Here I have an example for you. Business technology analyst, BTA, is the term or the designation or the position. This person joined in 2020 and he is still working at Deloitte. 
Now, look at the complete name of the company. It's Deloitte Consulting India Private Limited. So do not write just the incomplete information about the company, write the complete name. And look how in two bullet points, this person has highlighted what he has been doing. So he wrote to develop a trip analytics window service using .NET framework. I'm not reading the second one, but I think it should give you a fair enough idea how to talk about your job responsibilities. Moving to the next one, this is the internship and it is mandatory for you to do an internship uh, right now. So, you know, you need to follow the same pattern of documenting your internship as a work experience. So first mention the job title, which is in this case an intern name of the company and the year or the months you've worked for and you highlight your job responsibilities in one or two bullet points. The next one are your projects. You need to capitalize on your projects. It's mandatory again for you to do a BE project. So first you need to mention the title of the project and the year. Next is you need to talk about the nature of the project, whether it is curriculum based, whether it's a professional project for which you were paid or whether it's an amateur project which you did just because you're interested in coding and creating something. So, for example, if you uh, create a game like Ludo King, it talks about high level of awareness about algorithms. So if you put something like this in your resume, then mostly uh, the panel will question you about it based on this itself you might be hired in a company so i request students to get into amateur projects and create a few projects so that you have a lot of material to put in your resume you must highlight what it is about so here are two examples for you these two examples I've taken from one of my ex-students. He was very brilliant and today he's doing very well in life. So the first one, the name of the project is The Helping Hand. He did it in June 2020. Now this is a B project curriculum related. In this, he made a glove that helps mute people translate hand gestures to speech. And based on the Arduino microcontroller and a Bluetooth model, he was able to make this project. Now, the next one will surprise you. The student was so brilliant that he was offered a professional project by the Mumbai Regional Transport Office. And for them, he created the DigiSync meter. Now, look at the bullet points. He's talking first about what is the DigiSync meter and what did it do ultimately. So the DigiSync meter is a centralized, trackable, remotely updatable rickshaw taxi meter. Now, this particular project helps eliminate fare revision costs. And as a result, the RTO, the Mumbai RTO was saved 40 crore in Indian rupees, which is a huge amount. So this is like a big thing in your resume. And this he got it apart from what he has done in terms of his curriculum. And just based on this, he was offered a very, very good job. So again, I will insist that please, other than your curriculum based projects, please try and put your fingers into newer projects, amateur projects. Next, we're going to be talking about your technical skills. Now, the technical skills I've put it towards the end of the resume because most of what you've talked about say your projects and your internships you have been able to apply your technical skills so those come before as they're more important they're application based so uh, this is in fact the heart of your resume so you have to again capitalize on this you group your skills under different headings do not put them all club them together segregate them you can also use a slider or a point rater to rate yourself how good you are in a particular technology. Here is an example for you. Please group your programming or scripting languages. For example, Java, C++, things like that. Next is there are different databases. You might want to talk about some of them like an Oracle, okay, MongoDB. Now, this information I've got from my ex-students and this I'm sharing with most of you so that you have a fair idea of how to segregate your technical skills. 
There are different frameworks like Angular JS, Ruby, or Rails. It does not make a lot of sense to me because I'm not a technical person, but it definitely will make sense to the students. Next is we're talking about the different software, for example, your Office 365, Adobe Photoshop. And the last one in this list would be the different operating systems, for example, Windows, a Mac operating system, Linux, Unix. Here is an example of how you can use the point rater or the slider to talk about the different technical skills that you have. And with this, I come to the end of this video session for more videos on this topic. In fact, about the additional components that you must include or can include in a resume, please refer to the description box below. The name of my channel is Tall Talks from a Short Lady. And with that, I will say thank you and bye.